So when January 6th happened, um, there were a number of voices on the left, uh, to their credit, including many of the people in the squad on this particular issue, who were saying, wait, 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 hold your horses. Yes, it was a riot. Yes, it was an attempted insurrection. Yes, whatever negative thing you want to say about this was probably true. However, be careful because we know how these things end. Namely, the federal government will use this event to further entrench their power and their authority and take away everybody's rights and move more and more towards an authoritarian system. And you don't have to look too far in the past to see this playbook unfold. Look at what happened in the wake of 9-11. We had something called the Patriot Act passed. Patriot Act sounds lovely, right? You're a patriot, I'm a patriot, we're patriots, isn't that, isn't that great? No, the Patriot Act was like, what if we had the NSA illegally and unconstitutionally spy on all Americans? And we totally destroy your right to a protection from unreasonable search and seizure. That's what the Patriot Act was. And of course, it took the bravery of Edward Snowden to blow the whistle on this, and Glenn Greenwald reported on it, so on and so forth. But a lot of keen observers were watching this skeptically, the January 6th incident, saying... Everybody be cool, be cool, be cool. If if our hair's on fire over this, you know what's going to happen is they're going to come and take away everybody's rights even more. And so, now we know that's exactly what happened. So, Biden released this new anti-domestic terrorism initiative. And, um, you know, the idea is, hey, white supremacist terrorism is a huge problem in the United States. Anti-government extremism is a huge problem in the United States. So we need to give more power and authority to the intelligence agencies to combat this stuff. Whether it's the Department of Homeland Security, whether it's the NSA, the FBI, you name it. All these intelligence agencies, the idea is beef them up because we have this threat and we need to make sure we keep the threat in check. Now you should already be worried because there's been... Anybody who follows this stuff closely knows that... Every couple years, a new story comes out where it's like, FBI foils terrorist plot that was going to attack fill in the blank. And then you read the specifics of it, and you find in almost every one of these cases, it's entrapment. They take some, like, 19-year-old, mentally ill, super low IQ Muslim kid, and they entrap him and basically force him to be on the brink of doing something terrible, and then at the last minute, they pounce and they say, See! We foiled an inevitable terrorist attack. No, you didn't. You entrapped somebody who was mentally ill. You for basically forced them to do it, and then at the end, you turn around and portray yourselves as heroes. This is what they do. And nobody should be surprised by this, because anybody who knows the history of the FBI and the CIA and all these different agencies knows they're not on your side. They're not looking out for you. You know? Uh, and... If you think they are, for the love of God, read the history, and then you'll come to understand that it's naive to think so. So, um, but it gets better. So, you, you heard me say just now that the nominal argument is there's a lot of white supremacist and right-wing anti-government extremists in this country, and we have to crack down on them. Well, guess what? When you read the fine print, that's not where it ends. So, let me show you this. This is actually very, very interesting. Um, so th this, these are some of the definitions and the standards in this new anti-domestic terrorism crackdown. So we see here racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists. DVEs stands for um, domestic violent extremists. They say animal rights and environmental violent extremists. Hmm, weird. You're adding a crackdown on animal rights and environmental violent extremists? That seems like a reach. Underneath that, you see abortion-related violent extremists. Now, funny enough, they say... Pro-life extremists and pro-choice extremists. Yes, there's um, there's so many pro-choice extremists out there blowing up what evangelical Christian churches for advocating pro-life causes. That's not a thing that doesn't happen. But let's continue. Anti-government, anti-authority, violent extremists. Hmm. Let's read this one. DVEs with ideological agendas derived from anti-government or anti-authority sentiment, including opposition to perceived economic, social, or racial hierarchies, or perceived government overreach, negligence, or illegitimacy. Militia violent extremists, DVEs who take overt steps to violently resist or facilitate the overthrow of the U.S. government in support of their beliefs that the U.S. government is purposely exceeding its constitutional authority and is trying to establish a totalitarian regime, 
oppose many federal and state laws and regulation, particularly those related to firearms ownership. Look at this next one. Anarchist violent extremists, DVEs who oppose all forms of capitalism, corporate globalization, and governing institutions which are perceived as harmful to society. Then they go on, sovereign citizens, that's right-wing anti-government extremists, and then you have all other domestic terrorism threats, where they include people who have a problem with, quote, a combination of personal grievances and beliefs with potential bias. So, somehow, personal grievance crimes now constitute terrorism, even though terrorism is defined as doing a violent action for a political or religious reason, they say, well, no, personal grievance now counts as terrorism. Now, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do a personal grievance crime, but that's not terrorism. That's not the definition of terrorism. That's called a regular crime. They're stretching the definitions. And again, anarchist violent extremists, DVEs who oppose all forms of capitalism. Wait, so you have to be in favor of some form of capitalism in order to not be an extremist? You oppose all forms of corporate globalization. Wait, you have to be in favor of some degree of globalization? Corporate globalization in order to not be an extremist? And if you oppose all forms of our governing institutions. So you have to support our current governing institutions and think they are not harmful to society in order to, be, to not be an extremist. That's literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. But we warned you this was going to happen. So now they're cracking down on everybody and using January 6th as the reason, as the excuse. In the same way that after 9-11, we did the Patriot Act, and now they can spy on anybody. Illegally and unconstitutionally, you have no more constitutional rights. You have no more Fourth Amendment protection from unreasonable search and seizure. The exact same thing is happening here. Now, funny enough, there are certain parts of this... Um, domestic terror crackdown where they say, listen, 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 everybody be cool, be cool. All we're talking about is violent actions, violent crimes. We are not talking about ideology. Now, if that were true, that would be definitely positive and better than the alternative. However, um, so there's an article in PBS on this, and let me read you some from that quote. The new strategy includes enhancing the government's analysis of domestic terrorism and improving the information that is shared between local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. Administration officials said the Justice Department had also implemented a new system to, quote, methodically track domestic terrorism cases nationwide within the FBI. So now, local, state, and federal government authorities are all working together sharing information together, and they will, quote, methodically track domestic terrorism case cases nationwide within the FBI. Quote, the U.S. government will augment its efforts to address online terrorist recruitment. Wait, you said it was limited to violent actions. How do you know that it's violent actions if it's online terrorist recruitment? That means it's somebody who you think maybe, maybe not, might do something in the future because they're saying some stuff online. That's not the same thing as violent actions. That's not violent actions at all. Quote, domestic violent extremists are U.S.-based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of the criminal laws of the U.S. Let me repeat that. Domestic violent extremists are U.S.-based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of the criminal laws of the U.S. So you don't have to just conduct crimes. You have to, quote, threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of the criminal laws of the U.S. My interpretation of everything I just read you here, both from the actual crackdown itself and from the PBS article on it, is that it's definitely not limited to action. Now they think there are thought crimes. There are thought crimes. So if you're a QAnon person... If you're somebody who's on the far right, if you're an anti-government extremist on the right, if you're an anarchist and you're on the left, if you're extreme, extreme in either direction, they think you're a potential domestic terror threat and they are going to spy on you and they are going to take away your rights and they are going to infiltrate movements and they are going to try to bring them down from within. 
That's what this is. That's what this is. So Joe Biden, Joe Biden is spying on anti-capitalist extremists. That's what he's doing. He's doing a crackdown on the so-called far left. Even if there was no violence, even if there was no terrorism, there is the potential for that stuff there, because perhaps you threaten it, you threaten something dangerous, so hey, we gotta keep an eye on you. We gotta do it, we have no choice, you leave us no choice. Oh, you definitely have a choice. But anything that threatens the status quo, anything that threatens the establishment, anything that threatens the powers that be, or anything that is perceived as a threat to it, they're coming for you. And again, if you think I'm stretching here, if you think I'm reaching, for the love of God, read the history of it. Every single left-wing movement, successful and unsuccessful, was infiltrated by U.S. intelligence agencies, and they attempted to bring it down from within. They wrote a letter to Martin Luther King Jr. basically saying, hey, we know what you're up to, we know you're cheating on your wife, and you're a piece of shit, you should probably kill yourself. Lord knows how many people they actually did kill. Did they kill JFK? Did they kill RFK? Did they kill Martin Luther King? Did they have something to do with Malcolm X? Was it not just the Nation of Islam, or was it the Nation of Islam working with the intelligence agencies? You tell me. You tell me, but we know for sure that they infiltrated these movements and attempted to bring them down from within. They don't make a distinction between we think you're fighting for good things, and we think you're fighting for bad things, so we're only going to go after the people who fight for bad things. They don't make a fucking distinction. They think if you're fighting for things, that's a problem. Whether it's civil rights, wh whether it's a new economic bill of rights, whether it's against corporate globalization, whether it's anti-capitalist, they're against all of it. They look at Antifa, they look at left-wing movements in the exact same way that they look at white supremacists or sovereign citizens or far-right anti-government extremists. You're all the same to them, because you all threaten the establishment, albeit in very, very different ways. So, careful. People wanted to give the government more power in response to January 6th. The response should have always been, Hey, dipshits, we already have all the laws we need on the books. Now you just find whoever committed crimes and prosecute them. That's what you do. That's what you do. But no, people were like, oh, we need new laws anti-insurrection or anti-riot laws or anti-QAnon laws or police the internet now and crack down on free speech and censor people and deplatform de people. Be careful what you wish for. If you're on the left, all of this fuckery will always come back to destroy you. Because people on the left definitionally question those in authority, question the status quo, question the establishment, and they do not want that. Well, here we are. It doesn't get much worse than this. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe, it helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.